back to the Event House channel. I'm your host, Jill Goldfein. Today, we are talking to Spencer Hux about meetings coming back. We're so glad that people are traveling again, although there's hesitation. So I'm gonna to talk to him about the pros and cons and what he's hearing from both sides as a supplier and a planner. So let's get started. Let's give a big welcome to Spencer Hux from HB Hospitality. He's in the unique position of being on both sides of the aisle. On the one hand, his company represents and supports hotel sales teams. And over here, he holds events and conferences for meeting planners. Hi, Spencer. Thanks so much for joining us here today. I'm so excited to meet you in person, sort of, and uh, have a chat this morning. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jill. Nice to be with you. It's nice to nice to meet you as well, at least in this fashion, and I uh, appreciate you having us on. Excited to be of here. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Um, could you start by telling us a little bit about your own hospitality background and a brief summary of HB Hospitality? Absolutely. Um, I started my career in hospitality back in 2005 at Keela Island Golf Resort in the Sanctuary uh, down in Charleston, around Charleston, South Carolina. Um, I worked there in group sales for close to 10 years, kind of handling several different markets throughout the country, um, ending with, with quite a few years handling the Northeast. Uh, I then had the opportunity to go to the Hermitage Hotel, which is a sister property, the only five-star hotel in Nashville, uh, as the director of sales there. Um, so continued my career there, and then uh, from the Hermitage, moved over to Pinehurst for, as the director of group sales back in 2017. So spent a few years there, um, always on the group sales side of things, okay. and then joined the HP Hospitality team as the vice president of sales and strategic partnerships in um, the summer of 2020. Interesting time to make a move, but the timing, uh, long story on, on how the timing all unfolded, but it was just a great opportunity to join Danielle and the team. Um, and then recently have moved into the role of COO here at the company, but um, you know, we're a small team, we're, we're about 11 of us total. So um, we still all wear a lot of hats and, and you know, service the, try to service our customers the best we can. And HB Hospitality? Yeah, sorry. So HB Hospitality is a community of luxury hotels and resorts um, and meeting planners. We have about a hundred hotel, a little over a hundred hotel and resort partners right now in the community and close to 6,000 meeting planner members. So it is an invitation only community that really thrives and um, makes, makes the goal built around connecting planners to hotel partners in a direct relationship so that they can do business together. And, you know, our belief is that once you, connect, um, once you connect planners directly with hotels, those hotels can represent themselves better than anybody else can. So it really creates the best environment for doing business and, and getting the planner's goals accomplished and also finding the right business mix for the hotel properties. So um, the, the, the company, HB, has been around for about 10 years and was founded by Danielle Bishop in, in 2010. Um, we have grown from just being a few events a year to now operating close to 70 events annually, as well as operating our, um, our online platform called Hive which is a community for our members to exchange ideas, source RFPs, um, research properties for the hotels to have direct connections with the planners. And I have been to HB events and I've enjoyed them and, and found them to be very beneficial. So I'm glad that we're sharing a little bit about that. I want to dive in a little bit uh, to get your perspective on what you've seen um, sort of in general on the hotel side, uh, and also you wear the unique hat of being a planner yourself because of all the summits and events uh, in person that you uh, put on there yourself. So mm -hmm. I guess we'll start with restrictions mm -hmm. um, that you've seen that are being put in place for uh, how you're managing that in the planning process, uh, as well as on site to ensure safety um, to all of your attendees. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, you know, for, I think for everyone in the industry, it's been a moving target really these last 18 months, you know, to your point, it kind of went from everything canceling right away uh, last year to slowly, gradually getting back to business um, throughout the fall for certain companies. And, and, you know, obviously the effects are still in place. Um, 
So we have, um, we've shifted quite a bit and, and obviously, you know, the, the stereotypical word had to be, had to be nimble and pivot and all of this, all of those words that you expect to hear. But yeah. um, last year, our, our team prior to my joining um, transitioned all of our in-person events to virtual, um, all of our in-person one day uh, showcase events to virtual events through the duration of 2020. Um, but we did actually operate seven in-person events last year from August to December. And, you know, that was obviously as, as everyone was trying to get comfortable with, with what that would look like, we took local regulations um, into account. We kept group sizes a little smaller than they typically would have been. Um, we did the uh, safety measures in some cases of the, the wristbands of comfort levels of red, yellow, and green. Mm -hmm. uh, we kept social distancing practices in place. We used outdoor events as much as possible. Um, and then in certain situations, we actually had on-site testing available as well, once that became a little bit more prevalent towards the end of last year. Um, so that allowed us to get through those seven, seven events, which were our summit events, without uh, really any issues that, that we're aware of. So that gave us some confidence coming into this year. We did do our um, first quarter. We intended for the entire quarter to be virtual. That was the plan coming out of the gates, uh, which I'm looking back on, I'm glad that we did it that way. Um, we actually ended up holding that through until April as well. But um, since May, we've been operating in-person events uh, for, for our showcases and our summits and really have had, had a very successful spring and summer um, to just kind of give a, a couple of, of uh, a little bit of insight into the different markets. Uh, we've been in Denver, Salt Lake, Chicago, Minneapolis, LA, Phoenix, um, and then the Northeast as well. So again, what we've done is kept the local regulations kind of as our guiding um, principle and really worked with whatever those jurisdictions have in place as far as capacity limits, masking requirements or anything else. Um, one thing that was interesting with LA, we, our showcase was sometime mid July and it was about a week after they had put the mask mandate back in place. Okay. And so we were, we were a little bit, bit curious about how that was going to affect attendance. Um, but it actually the attendance for that event, hit right on target for what we expected, um, similar to what it would have been in 2019. So wow. it, it was really nice to see that, you know, everyone complied with the mask. It was, a, I mean, it was a policy that was in place locally. The hotel followed through with it. Um, we kept it in place during the showcase and the meal outside, everyone was able to sit outside and enjoy the day. So um, that, that was a great launching pad for us to feel confident that we could still operate events with certain um, restrictions or, or rules in place. Mm -hmm. um, and then in New York, uh, we were there in late August uh, after the vaccine requirement had been put in place. And so our host, um, our host site had that requirement in place and we uh, just followed their guidelines and, and it went off again, very smoothly, all things considered. Um, slightly smaller group than we would have traditionally seen, but that's to be expected. Um, when you started requiring, or the, the property you started requiring vax cards, I mm -hmm. would imagine to, to show proof of vaccination, did you check the attendees at the door or did the hotel provide a staff person to verify? What was that process like? Yes, the hotel in that case provided a staff person there at our registration desk. I, 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 I was not there personally. I believe our team assisted with that as well, just as the registrations came in. Um, and I really don't think, I think there was maybe only one, um, one instance of, a, of there being confusion about that policy for someone who came to the event and there was no issue with it. It just, um, that person had not been, had not read the, the policy, but otherwise I think it went off very smoothly. It's becoming more and more common in cities across the country, I guess, with proof of vaccination. So uh, I was curious who provides that service? So I think it probably varies, but I, I'm glad to hear that was your experience. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that is something that we are working on, working with right now. So for the rest of the fall, um, again, our, our in-person showcases in various markets are just gonna follow local parameters, local guidelines. Um, the summits that are HB hospitality events that are over the course of three days, two nights. Um, starting in October, we have asked that attendees be, um, anyone attending the event be vaccinated. Um, so we sent out that requirement in, I want to say about a month ago. Um, and overwhelmingly, the response was very positive. Uh, we had a couple of, of guests who opted out um, for their own personal reasons and, and totally understood. But sure. uh, generally speaking, I'd say 99% have been very positive. Um, many, the, the majority of those have been 
eager and willing to share their information with us that we had on file. Mm -hmm. uh, those who have not wanted to send it to us, we're gonna, we're gonna manage with the property or we're man managed with our team of um, seeing that proof on site uh, where, where, we, where we can. Uh, do you utilize um, the phone screening? The couple of questions I've had to answer at events um, prior to arriving, like, how, uh, are you feeling sick? Are you, uh, have you been exposed to someone who, you know, recently who, who tested positive, things like that, either in an app or a website or just a questionnaire upon arrival? We do have, um, we've, done, we've done a little bit of everything. So um, in the very early parts of, I, I hate to say the early parts because it's still certainly ongoing, but um, last fall when we were first operating our in-person events, there were temp temperature screenings mm -hmm. at many of the events every time that an attendee entered, entered either the property or one of the events in the, in the event spaces. Um, we have had those questionnaires at showcases where any guests arriving that day have just had to acknowledge they're not feeling any symptoms, that they have not been in close contact and just do a quick checkbox. Um, and we do on our registration pages for the larger, uh, the, the multi-day events, we have a few, que a few questions and checkboxes just acknowledging the uh, relative to vaccination status. Um, that they understand that, that that is the policy. Hey, you can't have too many precautions, right? Uh, absolutely, yeah. and, and again, it's varied as as the as things have changed over the course of the year and, and the destination that we're um, in which we're hosting the event. So, lots of different factors for everybody to consider. Yes, absolutely. Are you seeing any attendee hesitation for whether it be um, not maybe your protocols or the geographical destination, the hotel in particular, things like that. Are people expressing anything like that to you? Yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing, we're certainly hearing a little bit of that. Our, um, our in-person showcases that are, that are upcoming for the rest of the fall um, in certain cities, Dallas, um, Atlanta, trying to think, uh, Washington, D.C. right now, um, those are trending to be normal attendance uh, to, relative to what we'd expect at our shows in the past. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain other cities where it is a little bit lighter than what we usually strive as our target goal. Um, we attribute a lot of that, you know, anecdotally and just also from, from the, the responses we're seeing. Um, remote working is playing a role in it. Um, mm. And I, honestly, I think that's, that seems to be a bigger factor than, um, than actual attendee hesitation would be remote, the remote workforce and then also company policy. We are seeing some of these larger corporations put travel restrictions in place. And so the planners who may personally be willing to attend are not allowed to attend an event for you know duration of time or whatever else. Um, and some of our hotel partners have had that in place as well where travel to certain regions is now prohibited through October. Mm -hmm. or, or so um, I'd say it's more company policy than it is individuals telling us that they don't feel safe. Um, okay. Okay. With the, with the vaccination um, requirement that we put out, actually, most of the responses we got back indicated that this helps them, this policy that we now would have in place is going to help them, you know, get approval to attend or makes them feel more safe. So I think we've seen more of that feedback than, than the opposite or than the other, than the other side of things. Well, Spencer, you have the unique position of being on working with your finger on the pulse of hotels and planners, um, two sort of separate audiences for this uh, scenario. Um, tell me, are you, how are you seeing the two uh, groups, those two audiences working together um, on their own meetings? Uh, not necessarily your summits uh, and showcases, but for out in the field for the members of your hive and your hotel partners? Yeah, um, definitely still from the feedback that we're hearing from, from both sides, um, it's definitely still a little bit you know, turbulent. And again, certain companies are moving full forward with full force with their programs um, while others are, are working to delay or, or reduce the size of their events. Um, we had a, a poll uh, kind of an informal poll that was posted by one of the planners recently that just asked, you know, for the fall, how, what, you know, what is your company doing with your, with your events? Are they staying in person? Are they moving hybrid? Are they going virtual or canceling? 
And about 70% of the responses there indicated that the planners are moving forward with their events in person. Um, and then, you know, I think over 90% were either some form of in-person virtual or um, hybrid with only maybe, you know, the, the remainder just saying that they were flat canceling. Um, that being said, I think what we're hearing on, you know, from our hotels is that the cancellations are coming in throughout the fall, some are short term. Um, they're, they're wide ranging. I wouldn't say that there's a a consistent message of this type of group is canceling, whereas this type of group is not. I think so much of it is dependent upon an organization's comfort level, um, the attendee profile, the amount of travel, uh, just all of those things. But um, I do think that there's some, you know, that it's still a, a little bit of a trying time because, you know, looking at it from a hotel's perspective, what we saw in the spring was that as the numbers got better and as the vaccine rollout took place, our hotel partners for the most part booked up in the summer and in the fall and had almost no availability for 2021. Um, some of that was because things got moved from 2020 to 2021, some of it was demand, but they're sitting with no availability for the rest of this year. So they've been turning away business for months, um, trying to move it into 22. Mm -hmm. So now to have cancellations when though when you know they would have had the opportunity to fill that space previously with other groups but to see these short-term cancellations for events that um you know otherwise legally could operate um so it really just becomes a choice of the organization i think those are the tough conversations that are that are taking place um the concept of you know a company not feeling comfortable and feeling like they are within their right to cancel because of the pandemic when in a lot of hotels perspectives you can fly to the airport you can operate the event based on the size. There are no restrictions. Most places don't have mask requirements. So at that point, it's the hotel bearing 100% of that responsibility, or 100% of the pain in that case. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's just a lot of conversations of trying to make sure both sides at least understand that and acknowledge that and then work through a reasonable solution. Um, like everything, it's partnership based. It's um, you know trying to work trying to work out a negotiation that's gonna that's gonna benefit or work with both parties. Yes, that's exactly what I'm hearing as well. Uh, it's all about communicating and multiple conversations um, to try and reach a happy medium, mm -hmm. something that's amenable to both sides. Um, I have seen uh, hotels trying to be flexible with their attrition. Um, a big thing that I've heard, and you can concur and elaborate, uh, is that hotels want the planners to try to meet in person. And if they're seeing that, that they're making every effort and they're, they're marketing and they're encouraging and communicating all the safety precautions and the local protocols and all this, and the numbers just aren't matching up to what they you know, hoped and expected, uh, that I'm, I'm seeing some hotel flexibility with attrition um, and things like that, that if, if you're making the effort, we, we want to help you make the effort and, and not penalize you for doing so. Yeah, that's a great point. And we heard as much at, our, at one of our recent events um, with we had 15 hotel partners and, and 15 to 17 planner, planners with us too. And um, yeah, to, to your point that the, the effort of having of having an event and of open communication and looking at all the options possible, I think is always preferable to a full cancellation. I should say, I shouldn't say always, but usually can't preferable to a full cancellation. Um, you know, and the other thing that's, that's an influence in that too is that the leisure demand, at least within our community for many of our resort properties and destinations is still extremely high. So if those conversations with a group are taking place far enough in advance, you know, and rooms are released, it gives the, the hotel the chance to recuperate that revenue and, and um, you know, to, to really suffer almost no loss. And so at that point, then it becomes, you know, a partnership, everybody's working together. And, and I feel like the general message is that's always preferable. Um, you know, and I, I think that I don't want to make it seem like it's from, um, you know, just that the, the hotels are the only ones experiencing any any pain in this circumstance. Obviously, the, obviously organizations trying to cope with all of the moving pieces have a lot, a lot at stake as well. Um, yes, and often those the in-person meetings are money makers for so many uh, planning organizations, associations, mm -hmm. corporations. There's sponsors that 
aren't coming and aren't going to pay. There's attendee registration money that you're not coming. We're not going to register, obviously. So it's definitely a loss for the uh, organization as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you talk about you talk about vendor registration, exhibit booths, um, you know, attendee registration, all, just all of those things that go into to driving the business overall. So, um, yeah, I think I think just in general, communication partnership. From from my time on the hotel side of things, you know, I can say really with, without exception, the first goal was would always be to, to partner and figure out a solution that that does potentially work for both parties. I mean, that's always the the idea. It's very rare to you know want to just hold a hard line on a contract and end a relationship right there. Um, that's, right. I, I don't think that often is is anyone's intention. So no, absolutely not. Yeah. No, we're hospitality people. Right. Yeah, we want to cool try and make things right. work. <laughs> Exactly right. So, yeah, so it's, uh, but it definitely is, is a stressful situation to try to work through all of those things and not knowing what's coming three or six months down the road. Um, on, on, again, on both sides, it's, it's not a, not a, there's no, uh, you know, perfect scenario for it. Right. For it. Of course, of course. And there's so much uncertainty and, we, there's still, we, we don't know what's coming down next. Um, so we're, we're riding it the best we can. Um, I think that the underlying theme is communication. Absolutely. And I, and I think too, on the, you know, on the front end, some of the conversation that came up at our, at our recent event was that, you know, contracts that are being signed right now, um, whether they're a rebook or whether they're new contracts, and at the end of the day, they're being signed in the midst of a pandemic. And so, there is an opportunity on the front end to, to have that communication, you know, at that time and work on terms that, um, you know, that both parties agree to that, um, you know, I think are going to make, make the process of, you know, when the program needs to actualize um, a little bit easier to understand to, regardless of the circumstances. So, so some of that communication definitely can and is taking place right now. Your, your feedback is, is great to hear. Um, and we all seem very optimistic. We, we're, you know, we're, we're hopeful and, and we're making our way back. Uh, a lot of this is not putting us down at this point. So much is plowing forward and, and that's good. And, and hopefully we'll, we'll continue on that trajectory. Certainly, that is definitely our, definitely our hope. And um, we are you know, planning to move forward with everything in person. Um, unless uh, regulation keeps us from doing that, we're, we're gonna be in person and, and obviously you know, doing our whatever we can to keep it safe, but also keep it, uh, keep the business moving forward. So. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Spencer. This has been great. It's been wonderful chatting with you. Likewise, Jill. Really appreciate the time. Thanks for having me on today. Enjoy your weekend. I look forward to meeting you at some point, hopefully soon. Thanks for watching. If you are planning an in-person meeting and have some concerns about various CDC guidelines from state to state or country to country mandates, I am a certified COVID compliance officer, and I would be happy to help you navigate all of those questions.